After having loved Top Gear Overdrive, I was really looking forward to seeing what Snowblind Studios would be developing next for the console. I didn't have to wait all that long at all, because in the year 2000 Kemco published Top Gear Hyperbike, which was a direct head-to-head -head with Nintendo's own Excitebike. What first intrigued me the most though was that unlike Excitebike, Top Gear Hyperbike would contain both dirt and road racing, and the developers promised that each style of racing would have its own unique set of mechanics and physics. Not only this, but the game would take place across the world, have many different game modes including a trick attack mode, but most interestingly was a track editor. This would allow you to build your own custom courses within the game and even save them for future plays. However, to kick things off with, I'll start with the main game mode which is its championship series of races. Very much like Top Gear Overdrive, the championships gradually get longer, harder and require more points in total to complete them and move on to the next. In a nice twist though, the races themselves alternate between dirt races and road races. The dirt races are exactly as the name suggests. You'll be racing along dirt tracks in some awesome locations like forests and deserts. While in the dirt based races you'll have checkpoints to pass through and a ton of jumps which you can use to your advantage. If you get enough air you can actually pull off stunts which will lead to boosts, but be careful because if you crash then you'll be wasting precious time. The road races take place exclusively on tarmac and are a much more high octane racing affair. Interestingly though for each of the game's settings there is both a road and a dirt version of the track, so even the location may be the same the actual courses are different, and so it's quite cool to see the environment but in a unique course for each type of race. As you progress and win championships you'll unlock more courses, but most importantly new bikes to race with. While like most racing games these gradually get faster and faster, there are also some fun ones thrown in the mix, such as a scooter and even a mini monkey motorbike, which is surprisingly fun to race with. When you're done racing however and you've completed the quite extensive championship mode then you can create your own courses in the previously mentioned create a track feature. This starts off as a basic oval but you're free to add twists, turns, jumps and dips until you have a course that you are happy with. This is quite simple to edit once you get the hang of it and when you're done you can test it out and save it to play through. In a very welcome addition the game also has expansion pack compatibility and like Top Gear Overdrive it's used to bump up the resolution which is greatly welcomed. When playing the game with the expansion pack enabled I will say that the game seems to have occasional stutters. If this begins to annoy you then I would suggest turning off the high res mode and this solves this completely. In comparison to the other three motorbike racing games on the console I found this to be perhaps the best looking. It certainly doesn't have that level of polish which Excitebike did but the course designs and graphics are a whole lot more inspired. When playing the game each course feels unique and there are some surprising level setting choices but none which I felt were out of place. As with Snowblind Studios other N64 efforts there is a level of motion blur which you will either love or hate but this can be turned off in the options menu but personally I think turning it off really takes away from the visual aesthetics of the game. Not everything in the game is improved from the other Top Gear series of racing games though. This time around the music is sadly bland and when racing the default volume is so low it's hard to hear. This was though perhaps intentionally done, as even with the volume turned up it doesn't even sound great to begin with. It's not just the music though, the effects are nowhere near up to speed, and in some cases the more powerful bikes sound like mopeds or petrol lawnmowers. Other sounds such as the crashes also lack any real sense of impact, which is a real letdown especially coming from a great series of games. The multiplayer mode is really just more of the same and the added extras in the game such as Nitro Boost do a little to expand on the gameplay. Thankfully there are a ton of secret routes through the game and so like Top Gear Overdrive there is some replayability to be had simply going back through the game's tracks trying to find all of these secret hidden routes. With there being four different motorbike racing games on the console, all of which landed around the same time, it would have been a tough choice trying to decide which one of the games was really worth picking up back in the day. Personally, if you felt that Excitebike was lacking a certain something special, then I would heartily recommend this title. It's packed full of intense arcade action, it has some interesting track designs and locations, while sadly, a few small nuances let down what could have been an instant classic. 
Still, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this title. And so for today's topic of conversation, I want to know what you think the best bike racer for the N64 was. Most people seem to choose between this or Excite Bike, but Road Rash and Supercross 2000 also have their fans. So as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And until next time.